We have a lot to cover in today's video, including the latest trade talk around teams like the Edmonton Oilers, the San Jose Sharks, Seattle Kraken, Buffalo Sabres, and the Montreal Canadiens. There was a big rumor this morning that Jake Allen was traded. Turned out not to be true. We'll discuss what that was going to look like and how things could go here in the future. We also got all kinds of injury updates, including Jake Gensel being injured and how that could impact his trade value at the deadline. Will he still be moved? Could he? Or what's going to happen with Pittsburgh? We'll discuss that. Plus, of course, we had big news in Columbus with Guillermo Cacalina, the GM, being fired. There's already speculation on who may take over, who might be the next GM, plus news from the waiver wire, and the Flyers have finally named a captain. All that and more coming up next. Welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a lot to cover in today's video, so let's dive right in and get started. A couple of quick items here. First, uh, one, the NHL waiver news. Uh, we did have... Uh, waiver news yesterday uh, we had everybody that was on waivers previously in the last couple of days that nobody's been picked up everybody's cleared so Rem Pitlick was the most recent one out of Chicago so he's uh, going to stay with the Blackhawks and be demoted uh, today a fairly good name that I'm a little surprised but I know he struggled this year's Washington Capitals forward Matthew Phillips he's on waivers today of course the former Calgary Flame uh, ended up departing as a free agent signed in Washington kind of followed uh, you know obviously some of the coaching staff that he was familiar with who also went to Washington and was getting more of an opportunity but has had a hard time capitalizing on it this year on a consistent basis. Um, I kind of half wonder with where everything is with the Flames, would they consider a reunion? Hard to say, but uh, Phillips is on waivers. We'll find out at 2 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow if he's picked up or will be uh, sent to Washington's minor league affiliate team. And there's also uh, unconditional waivers today for the purpose of a contract termination, and that's between the Vegas Golden Knights and prospect Marcus uh, Callion Kelly. Uh, I think I pronounced that right. So he will be uh, terminated the contract as of 2 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow once he clears unconditional waivers, and he'll be free to sign elsewhere. Normally when that happens, uh, it's because the player has uh, an opportunity for uh, you know a bigger role, more opportunity, wants to go back to Europe or whatever. Something along those situations is usually the most common things that we see, uh, and we'll find out what the future holds for him once that takes place as i mentioned not long after my video was recorded for last night on the updated news and rumors for the day uh we got news out of philadelphia that they uh, named themselves a new captain so that's longtime flyer sean couturier becomes the 20th captain in flyers history an excellent choice uh, to be honest i think he would have been probably named captain before uh, but he's obviously battled a ton of injuries and with his back the past couple of years uh, this has been his first season playing on a more regular basis in, in some time uh, otherwise, he may have gotten a C before. Uh, I know Tortorella and the Flyers have been reluctant uh, to kind of go down this route and, and uh, have a bigger leadership group. Uh, prior to that, the beginning of the season, they only had forward Scott Lawton with an A on his jersey. He was the only one. Uh, so along with this, Lawton remains uh, with, the, with the A on his jersey, part of the leadership group, and Travis Konechny joins him as well. Of course, I talked a bit about Konechny yesterday uh, before this was announced, and I mentioned that he's expected to sign a long-term deal with the Flyers in the offseason. I don't expect him to be somebody who's traded at the deadline, and I said that he could be a future captain of the Flyers. Well, he's part of the leadership group and we'll wear an A. It's a start. Eventually, I can see him taking over for Couturier sometime down the road. There is some speculation that the reason the Flyers decided to do this now might seem like odd timing, but about you know three weeks out from the NHL trade deadline, uh, there's a good possibility that Scott Lawton could be moved. There's a lot of talk that he's been getting a lot of interest and that the offers are interesting enough that the Flyers just might have to pull the trigger on a Lawton trade. As much as they like the player, uh, if the offer is too good to pass up, they're, they're going to do what's best for the team. We know that. And of course, being the only player on the team with a letter on his jersey, if he gets traded, then nobody's got one. So I think they've just seen enough that they can make a decision here and move on. If Lawton does indeed get moved, then of course, uh, his, you know, easy to, to add another A if they want. They don't have to. They can leave it at the two if they decide. So uh, congrats to Sean Couturier and Travis Konechny for getting uh, new letters on their jerseys. And certainly nice to see them finally have a leadership group in place in Philly. Now, as I mentioned, big news today. Yermo Kekalina was dismissed as GM of the Columbus Blue Jackets 
after 11 seasons at the helm. Of course, there is a dedicated video on the channel where I reviewed his uh, tenure and stats and uh, kind of his whole uh, time there in Columbus and gave some opinions and analyzed that situation. I just want to touch on it a little bit further. Of course, we learned a little bit more, um, of course, from John Davidson, who, I'm, to be honest, I'm a little bit surprised that uh, JD is still around. I thought they were going to be fired as a package. I really did when the time came, but obviously ownership felt that Davidson – didn't deserve that and decided to keep him around. Uh, will the next GM be somebody who's, you know, younger, more or less experienced? It's hard to say. And how much of an involvement, you know, is JD in the day-to-day -day operations? I think he's pretty involved, but obviously, you know, had a great relationship with Yermo and good friendship. So they certainly, um, you know, work together quite well. Hard to say the next dynamic is going to be, but there's already speculation on who might take over for Kekalainen. Uh, I know I've seen some people speculating about Rick Nash, the longtime Blue Jacket, arguably the greatest player to ever wear the jersey uh, and already working in the organization in the front office. I don't think he's going to be that guy. I do think they'll give him some consideration. And I think his opinion is going to be, highly respected and regarded to who that next GM is going to be. But Davidson made it pretty clear that it was likely coming from outside the organization. So I really don't think that that's likely going to be him. Could he get an increased role? It's possible. Um, and like I said, he'll be involved in the decision-making. I just don't see him getting that title. Not to say he couldn't have it someday. I'm not really sure what his long-term aspirations are for uh, you know what roles he wants to have down the line here um, with the Jackets or in hockey in general. But a couple of names to watch. One name that Rick Nash would know very well uh, from his time in junior, which obviously was brought up by Elliot Friedman, was Mark Hunter. We know Mark Hunter's been a prospective up-and-coming candidate for an NHL GM job for a long time. Uh, had a good stint with the Maple Leafs as an assistant GM. Then, of course, a uh, long, long time with he and his brothers running the London Knights and the OHL and uh, has done a phenomenal job on, on that aspect of it at the junior level. Uh, so Mark Hunter might be involved. And there's also some wondering, I think it was Darren Dreger of TSN that brought this one up, Jeff Gorton of the Montreal Canadiens. I mean, obviously, there's the instant connection of him and John Davidson. They were, um, you know, worked together with the Rangers and they were both fired at the same time. Um could we see a reunion? I mean, obviously, we know Jeff Gordon at the time after he left the Rangers and when the opportunity started to come up, you know, he got the role with the Canadians as president. Uh, I don't think there's any reason to think he's unhappy, but would he prefer to be more of a GM? Um, you get to wonder, um, could he be lured over? I mean, I would think based on the fact that he's in a big market and, a you know, original six team like Montreal, I'm sure they're paying him extremely well. I think it would probably take a good... Um, sizable contract to lure him out of there but it's a reasonable expectation to think that at the very least Davidson's probably going to reach out and say hey would you be interested in you know maybe having this role or not but I'll be curious to see who else I'm sure lots of other names are going to pop up here in the coming days and weeks personally we're considering so close to the trade deadline Davidson made it known at his press conference he wanted to speak to a, like a lot of different people and uh, obviously explore everything to make sure they get this right I don't think they're going to hire anybody too quickly. I think he'll handle the uh, details of uh, the trade deadline. Uh, he did say that Yarmo Kekalainen had already been engaging in trade conversations uh, leading into the deadline around a few players and that all the intel and all those conversations that they're uh, ever like Yarmo's kind of brought them up to speed on everything like that. Of course, he's got his assistants that are still going to be in place too, and they'll uh, continue to manage that. And I don't see any reason why they have to rush. They can handle that in-house and make sure the next GM's hired and ready to roll before we get to the key part of the off season when you have like the draft and free agency. So to me, I think they're probably going to be a little while, but you just never know when they're going to find their guy. So we'll see. But that was certainly uh, huge news this morning. Somewhat unexpected, but I, I expected this to happen at some point. I just wasn't sure if they might wait till the off season. So I wasn't overly shocked. I'm not sure about you. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Uh, lots of other uh, roster moves today and a couple of minor signings as well. Uh, the Rangers today announced they've signed defenseman Brendan Scanlon to a two-year contract extension. He's been part of the organization in the minor leagues for the past three years after signing as a college free agent. Uh, and now he gets a two-way NHL deal. So Scanlon gets two years in the New York Rangers organization. And we also had uh, signing as well with the Devils. Uh, the, they signed goaltender 
Isaac Poulter, he gets a two-year entry-level contract as well. Uh, he was already in the organization at the lower levels. Uh, he previously had a two-way contract that would be eligible for the American Hockey League and the East Coast League. So now he gets upgraded to the NHL ELC so he can go between the NHL and AHL. So that's certainly a much bid, uh, you know, much, I'm sure, uh, you know, big upgrade for him pay-wise and what he can do uh, for games and be able to play. So certainly that's... Uh, a big jump for him. Uh, some other moves as well. The LA Kings today announced that uh, Victor Arvidsson's finally coming off long-term injury reserve. He's been activated. So that's great news. We've heard before that before they make too many moves, they kind of want to get him back in the lineup and see how that kind of, you know, settles things and hopefully gets the offense going again. But unfortunately, to do that and make that happen, they did have to move Carl Grundstrom and Blake Lazat both to LTIR as well, retroactive to when their injuries began. Uh, big return tonight. Connor Bedard's back for Chicago after having multiple uh, doctor's appointments earlier this week. He met with the team yesterday, and they made the announcement this afternoon that Bedard is back starting tonight. I suspect he's going to wear a full cage to protect that jaw for a little bit longer, but uh, the fact that he's back in action will be a huge boost for the uh, ticket sales for fans. Uh, and obviously to get him back in that Calder Trophy race, obviously I know Brock Fader uh, obviously has played a big role in the, probably the next top rookie and getting things uh, caught up point-wise. And he's obviously playing a ton of ice time as a D-man, uh, well-respected rookie. He's going to be in that conversation as well. Um, so Bedard's kind of, I think, trying to get back to, uh, to stake his claim here as Rookie of the Year. So we'll see. Hopefully he can stay healthy the rest of the year. Uh, Montreal Canadiens announced today that Brendan Gallagher also returns from injury tonight. Uh, the Sens today, after playing short in their last game, by uh, only having five defensemen, was able to do an emergency recall today. They've uh, called up right-handed defenseman Max Gannett, uh, who at the beginning of the season was on the roster as their number 7D, didn't really get much action, ended up going down. He was a, a I wouldn't call him a standout, but he had a really good training camp, and he uh, certainly impressed enough to stick around um, past training camp to the uh, early part of the regular season. So uh, clearly because of uh, salary cap implications, he hasn't been back up and up until now where we have the injury situation so uh we'll see how he goes they're hoping that uh, artem zub who he replaces in the lineup could be able to return as early as their next game on saturday when they face the returning connor bedard of the chicago blackhawks as they hit the road to go to the windy city uh, a couple other updates here as well uh, carolina today a big update freddie anderson was able to be at practice and be a participant which was great to see uh, certainly does not you know give a timeline exactly when he'll be able to come back and return but the fact that he was able to take that big step is encouraging and a, a huge part of the process here obviously he's been out for an extended period of time dealing with blood clot issues so uh, again don't have a timeline for him to return but it's a real big positive step that he's trending that way for sure. The Vancouver Canucks uh, looks like uh, Dakota Joshua may miss time. He looks like he's dealing with a hand injury. So we'll have to see where that goes. And in Buffalo, Uka Pekalukin was supposed to start tonight. But he is going to miss the game dealing with a minor injury as well. Uh, so unfortunately, he's going to be out. Comer, he's been brought in uh, to uh, replace them. Uh, and in Colorado, we got news today that the uh, recently signed Zach Parise did confirm this will be his last kick of the can. This is going to be Parise's uh, final NHL campaign. So he's hoping to go out on top and win the Stanley Cup here with the Avalanche, who of course won the Stanley Cup themselves not too long ago, only two seasons back. Um, and this is going to be his last shot. So hopefully he'll go out a winner. And the other big injury, as I mentioned, is Pittsburgh Penguins and Jake Gensel. Gensel does have a an injury that was believed to be fairly serious, and it, it indeed is, but it doesn't seem to be quite as serious as they might have originally thought. He's expected to be out up to four weeks. Now, four weeks put just, just past the trade deadline. Of course, this could, it could, I stress could, doesn't mean it will, have a big impact on his value at the NHL trade deadline, although I really honestly think if the Penguins decide to move him, that it won't be an issue. He should be able to return probably within that week after the deadline, if not sooner. And I don't think it's going to hurt his value at all. He's a proven top playoff performer. He's been extremely productive for the Penguins during all of their playoff stretches here. Um, phenomenal player, still good at a you know, fairly young age. There's no doubt that he can be moved and get the same package 
um, you know, at the deadline, even with with or without this injury. I, I really believe that. Um, so we'll see. Obviously, there's been a variety of interests around Gensel. Um, you know, it could cause some teams to shy away. Doesn't mean that the interest level is going to be exactly where it is, but it certainly won't d- dissipate to the point that they can't move him. The other big part, the bigger part of this, to be honest, is he's not going to be around anymore between now and the deadline to help the Penguins with their playoff push because obviously – whether or not they're trending towards being in the playoffs or not will probably also dictate what Kyle Dubas decides to do as far as hanging on to Gensel or trading him. So that's going to hurt the Penguins for sure in their playoff push here. They have some teams that they're battling with, and they are behind the eight ball. Getting into the playoffs is not going to be easy, and it's going to be that much tougher without Jake Gensel. Now, onto the trade rumor section of the video. A couple of players that we know, um, have, that we've already kind of suspected, but have been confirmed that they have requested a trade or working on trades between themselves, the team, and the agents. Uh, in San Jose, we know they're wide open for business with the exception of a couple of top prospects. Um, but at this point, we're not expecting anything too crazy. To be honest, I think the Sharks are going to have some players that they are not able to move. There may not be a lack, you know, a ton of interest, like a lack of interest in some of these guys are going to be a problem. You know, I think Duclair will have a shot to go if they want to move him. Uh, I don't know about Hoffman, Granlin, maybe, uh, but one name that's definitely looking to move on has been anxious to get a fresh start is Kevin LeBanc. LeBanc, a few years back, was a pretty solid player for them. At one point, it was believed when he took that one-year, $1 million contract, which I think, want to say, was like four years ago, I think it was, he really screwed himself over because he was in line for a longer-term, much more lucrative contract, and he helped the team on that one uh, with their salary cap situation to not have to move anybody major to keep him signed as well. And his play started to decline, dealt with some injuries, and it's been downhill Ever since, I'm sure he's kicking himself and he left a lot of money on the table during that time frame. So it's been clear based on recent interviews that his agent has permission to speak to teams and that they're all working together trying to find Kevin LeBanc a fresh start. He seems to think that uh, be what he needs to kind of rejuvenate his career here. So as much as there's going to be lots of talk about various Sharks players, LeBanc is one of the few that are kind of ahead of the eight ball here trying to find that deal with having his agent having permission to speak to other teams. Same goes in Buffalo with Victor Olofsson. Olofsson's a player who expected and was, I think, hoping to be traded last offseason. Uh, based on the end of last year and how the meetings went with the team, it's believed that they were under the impression that Olofsson was very likely to get traded. Unfortunately, it never came to be. Uh, he was at one point considered a power play specialist. Uh, had started to score a little bit more after that as a more of a five-on-five player, but the fact is now he's not even getting the power play time. Uh, his role has been diminished. He's been a healthy scratch numerous times. And it's really just time for Victor Olsen to kind of move on and find a fresh start somewhere else. He's, but I think, I believe a three-time 20-goal scorer. I don't completely understand why he's such a hard time to get in the lineup and find a steady spot. But, uh, you know, that's the Sabres' narrative and their choice. Uh, at the end of the day, this player is looking to move on and is also working between the team and his agent to try to find himself a fresh start and get off to another team here before too long. Another reunion that we could see would be Jordan Eberle and the Edmonton Oilers. We've talked about this before. There is legitimate links. And in yesterday's article from DailyFaceOff.com, Frank Zaravalli did have a Valentine's Day matchmaking type article where he was matching up some of the top names on the trade deadline list to new teams and where they could fit and what the returns could be. And he did indeed match Eberle for a reunion with his former team, the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, he had the uh, Seattle cracking, retaining 50% of Eberle's salary, and then also having a third team involved to retain another chunk to have the maximum percentage, which end up would be 25% additional. So essentially, they could get uh, Eberle from the Kraken and only have to pay 25% of his salary. So with that, uh, they had uh, the mock trade of a first-round pick in prospect Raphael Lavoie, going to the Kraken uh, for Eberle with 50%, and they have to pay a third team. They use Chicago as an example because they seem to be the type of team that would do that kind of trade, and they would get a fourth-round pick in Matthias Yenmark to make the money work. Um, So that would be the type of deal that the Oilers 
could benefit from the squeezing in another player like Eberly. Say what you want about him. I know he's kind of been up and down a little bit in the regular season, but he's been also a big time, big game performer. So clearly, uh, you know, a reunion in Edmonton to play uh, a role that can be uh, suitable for top six or top nine. I think he could be a great fit. Doesn't mean he's going to be perfect, and it may not happen. It's believed that one of their top priorities is Jake Gensel. That's certainly questionable now, but Gensel will also be a lot more expensive. If the Gensel, though, the Oilers trade does not materialize or work out, I know Everly is probably option two or three and will be a lot more affordable. So wouldn't be shocking if they indeed try to make this work out so uh, let me know your thoughts on the possibility of jordan eberly returning to the edmonton oilers now as i mentioned as well there was a pretty substantial rumor going around this morning uh came from um the, the spit and chicklets rumor boys they call them uh, matt murley uh posting online that jake allen was being traded to the colorado avalanche now that rumor that he posted uh which made it sound based on his intel that it wasn't a rumor that it was supposed to be something that was happening did not end up happening. Uh, a lot of other TSN and Sportsnet insiders like uh, Johnston, Friedman, Dreger all weighed in probably within 30 to 60 minutes of the fact that it was posted online and confirmed that they checked with all their sources and that a trade was not imminent. But some Colorado reporters, including Adrian Dater, said that his sources indicated that the Avalanche were definitely very much interested in uh, pretty hard after Jake Allen. So as much as the trade wasn't necessarily happening right now, that it does sound like there's a ton of interest and could be something that materializes here not too down to, far down the road. Now, we know Jake is uh, not having the most phenomenal season, but playing every you know third or fourth game is not exactly ideal either. He does have another year in his contract. I think if it's up to him, he probably wouldn't be dealt. Prefer to stay and ride this out in Montreal. I know his family's gotten quite comfortable there. It's not too far from home uh, as well from uh, for other family purposes. So it makes a lot of sense that he wouldn't want to go, but at the end of the day, he can't block a trade to every team. He does have a modified no trade, and I'm not sure what he would uh, – feel like having an opportunity to go join Nathan McKinnon and uh, Kale McCarr for a chance to win another Stanley Cup. I mean, obviously, he does have that experience. He's a pretty good goaltender, good in a tandem, could work well with Georgiev. The price on his contract might be challenging to do. Uh, the hard part here to make it work would be would be the salary cap. Of course, with the Colorado Avalanche situation, they don't have a lot of room left in their LTIR pool to add a player. So somebody would have to go out off the roster for sure. Now, we did not hear what the rumored return for Montreal would be. I think Montreal would end up having to take a contract. They'd have no choice. Uh, even if they retain money on it, they're going to have to take something back on his contract for the Avs or whoever else to make the money work. And then on top of that, end up getting uh, you know draft pick or prospect compensation. So we'll have to see if Jake Allen to Colorado materializes any further. But based on my knowledge of the situation being that Jake's obviously a hometown boy here for us in Fredericton, New Brunswick, I do uh, you know hear lots about him and certainly have some connections to the family. So I you know from that perspective I do kind of think something is brewing, uh, but it's been feeling that way for some time. But like I said, I know that uh, for sure that he's quite happy where he is. But I think it's also fair to say that all the goalies in Montreal are a tad frustrated with the three-goalie system. And as much as he probably doesn't want to have to uproot his family, relocate, he's got young kids in school now, or at least his oldest. Um same time, he'd probably like to have a better playing situation. So, hard to say. And I'm sure that nobody would ever be upset about having a shot at another Stanley Cup. The Avalanche are a pretty strong team who would certainly increase his odds. He's got this year and next year on his contract. I don't know how long Jake continues to want to be able to play. Uh, probably would depend on how things go uh, playing-wise. But we'll see. I, I think there could be something to this rumor. A lot of people have connected them to before. Um, you know, and Murley and Armstrong calling themselves the, the rumor boys on uh, the, uh, the, the Chicklets um, spinoff, if you will. Um, they put up some interesting stuff, and th- you could tell there's something to it, but eh, they haven't been bang on just yet. So uh, I think they're kind of newer to getting the inside scoop on stuff, and it's uh, obviously maybe jumped the gun a little bit. I wouldn't be shocked, though, if at some point before the deadline, a deal like this does happen. But let me know your thoughts. Clearly, like I said, money would have to go out of the Avalanche lineup off that roster to make the numbers work. 
Let me know what you think the request would be and how it could go down. Uh, down in the comments, we'll discuss further. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all the news, rumors, and analysis of all 32 NHL teams. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.